well students we are discussing method for computing eigen values of a given matrix in this we have introduced power method which can be used to obtain the dominant eigen value and a corresponding eigen vector of a given matrix in this lecture we will introduce a small variant of power method which is called inverse power method this idea can be used to obtain other eigen values of a given matrix which are not necessarily dominant eigen value the idea is very nice and interesting it relies on the following well known result from linear algebra the result says that if lambda is an eigen value of an invertible matrix note we have to work with invertible matrix then lambda inverse is an eigen value of a inverse right this is not very difficult to see suppose you have a v is equal to lambda v then you can multiply both sides by a inverse to get v is equal to lambda a inverse b right that implies a inverse b is equal to 1 by lambda into v since you have assumed the matrix to be invertible surely lambda will not be equal to 0 and also this step is justified so this is the basic idea for us to first obtain the eigen value of a given matrix a which is smallest in its absolute value how will you do that well let us assume that eigen values of an invertible matrix a are such that modulus of lambda 1 is greater than or equal to lambda 2 and so on and the last one the smallest eigen value in the absolute sense so i will often forget to say smallest in the absolute value i may just say smallest eigen value then you have to understand that i mean to say that it is smallest in its absolute value if the smallest eigen value u is unique then you can look for the corresponding eigen values of the matrix a inverse you can see that the eigen values of a inverse then will be arranged in this sense where 1 by lambda n will now become the unique dominant eigen value of a inverse therefore you just take a inverse as say b and let us denote 1 by lambda n as beta 1 and similarly 1 by lambda n minus 1 as beta 2 and so on then this will imply that beta 1 modulus is strictly greater than mod beta 2 is greater than or equal to and so on is greater than or equal to mod beta n so that is precisely the first hypothesis for us in the power method when applied to the matrix b right similarly if all other hypotheses are satisfied by b then we can use the power method to approximate the eigen value beta 1 of the matrix b and an eigen vector of beta 1 right so that is the basic idea of inverse power method so using inverse power method we can approximate the smallest eigen value of a as i told often i may forget to mention that smallest in the absolute sense let us now give the iterative procedure for the inverse power method as a first step you choose a vector x not arbitrarily well for the method it can be chosen arbitrarily when you are worried about whether it is going to converge to the dominant eigen value then theoretically we need to impose more hypothesis right but just to implement the method we just go ahead with a arbitrary initial 
vector and for every k equal to 0, 1, 2 and so on, we have to generate two sequences if you recall. One is a sequence of real numbers and other one is a sequence of vectors. How we do it? Well, first we will take x0 and multiply the, the matrix A with x0, right? And that we will call as y1. But here, you should remember that now we are applying the power method to A inverse, not to A. Therefore, it should be A inverse here. And that is precisely what is y1. And once you have y1, then you will go to construct mu1 and x1. Before going to that, we have to here remark that often it may be costly for us to invert the matrix A numerically and then use it here. So rather what we can do is we can solve this system of linear equations, right? So instead of having y1 is equal to a inverse x0, you can have a y1 is equal to x0. Since this is known to you, now this gives us a linear system which can be solved using any of the methods that we discussed. Since coefficient matrix is not going to change in our entire iteration process, therefore, a good idea is to go for a LU factorization of A, keep it with you, and you can apply one forward substitution and one backward substitution to get Y for every given X. That may sometimes leads to numerically an efficient procedure. Well, with that in mind, we can work with this as the computational procedure for y k plus one at every k plus one iteration. And the rest of the procedure is exactly the same as what we did with power method. That is, you take the smallest index at which the maximum norm is achieved and call the value of that, remember the value of that component of the y vector as your mu, right? So that is what I have written here. Let us take the minimum of all the components in the absolute value. You take the maximum of the absolute value of all the components and take that component at which this maximum is achieved at first. Say, for instance, y k is, say, minus 5, 3, 2, and 5, then your capital J will be 1. And the corresponding mu will be y capital J, that is y1, which is minus 5. So this is how the idea behind choosing the maximum component goes. And from there, you get mu k. And then xk plus 1 is defined as yk plus 1 defined, divided by mu k plus 1. All this remains exactly the same. The only part here is that since we are applying the power method with A inverse, you have two ways to compute yk plus one. One is directly find A inverse, keep it and generate yk plus one at every iteration or factorize A into LU form and then keep L and U and in every iteration, once you have xk, you do one forward substitution and one backward substitution to get yk plus one. So that's the only difference. From the examination point of view, if I ask you precisely to use LU factorization or similarly, you can also use Gaussian elimination or any other iterative procedures, right? 
it's a linear system therefore all the methods that we introduced to approximate uh, the solution of a linear system can be used here if i don't specify anything then you may choose to find a inverse and then go ahead or if i specify you you then have to use that method which i specified to obtain y case that is from the examination point of view. Well, this is the iterative procedure for inverse power method. When this it sequences will converge? Well, that is precisely the same as what we did with the power method convergence theorems. If you recall, we have introduced two convergence theorems for power method. They both will hold even in the case of inverse power method with appropriate changes, that's all. So that is more easy to see. And now the question is, if these sequences converge, where do they converge? Well, if our choice X naught was such that C1 is not equal to zero, certainly the inverse power method will converge to the dominant eigenvalue of the matrix A inverse. So your mu k will actually converge to one by lambda n. Remember lambda n is the smallest in the absolute sense. And what about xk? xk will converge to an eigenvector of lambda n. Remember eigenvectors will not change from A to A inverse. They remain the same, right? Only the eigenvalue of A inverse will be the inverse of the eigenvalues of the matrix A. Right. So therefore, xk will converge to one of the eigenvectors of lambda n1. Let us illustrate the idea of inverse power method through an example. Let us consider the matrix A given by this. You can see that it is one of our exercise problems. Now, we would like to apply the inverse power method for A. So, I prefer to use LU factorization. With this in view, I have factorized A using Doolittle factorization. In that process, I got L as, sorry, there is a typo here. It is 1, 0. L is given by this and U is given by this. So with this, I can write my system A, y k plus 1 is equal to x k as L into U, y k plus 1 is equal to x k. And you just call this as Z and first do a forward substitution and get Z vector using the lower triangular system LZ is equal to XK and then put that into U into YK plus one is equal to Z and get the required vector YK plus one. So this is something which we are very familiar with now. We have seen it in the LU factorization section. I'm just repeating it here. So I do every time this exercise and get the vector yk plus 1 by solving this system. And the rest all goes exactly the same as in the power method. So my first iteration is given like this. y1 is uh, given like this. Well, I have taken x0 as 1, 1, 1. With that, I have solved my system A, Y1 is equal to X0. And I got this vector. From here, we have taken the maximum norm of Y1 and saw which component attained the maximum. We took the minimum index out of those which attained maximum. In this case, it is only the first one. And we took the value of that and put here. And then x 
1 is nothing but y1 divided by mu1. That makes the first component to be 1 and the other things, right? Now, following the same idea, we can also get the second iteration, which is given like this, third iteration, fourth and fifth iteration. You can see that from fourth to fifth iteration, there is no change. That there is a very mild change here. Otherwise, you can see that the fourth and fifth iteration, they both remain almost the same. In fact, Y6, if you go, it is also going to be the same. Well, this is a typical behavior of a convergence sequence. If once you have the sequence values don't change up to the digits that are shown, it's very likely that they will remain like that, okay? Here I have shown only up to two digits. Maybe if you show more digits, there may be change in the iteration, but since I have shown only two, two digits after decimal place, you can see that up to this, the convergence seems to be going on well. So I have just stopped my iteration up to five, and then I took this as the approximate value of the required eigen value of A inverse, so the smallest eigenvalue, remember this is approximately the eigenvalue of A inverse, right? That will be the dominant eigenvalue of A inverse in its absolute value. And its inverse, that is one by mu five will happen to be the eigenvalue of a, and that will be the smallest eigenvalue of A in its absolute value. And that happens to be 0 0.61. You can cross check that up to two digits, 0 0.61 is the smallest eigenvalue of A. And a corresponding eigenvector is taken to be this vector that also up to two digit approximation two digit after the decimal place. This also is a good approximation for the eigenvector. So this is the idea of inverse power method. Once you set this idea, in fact, you can go to obtain any other eigenvalue of a given matrix A, which is not necessarily the dominant eigenvalue or the smallest eigenvalue. So how we can do that? Well, we have another idea called shifted inverse power method. We can use this method to obtain any eigenvalue of a given matrix A. Well, again, you need to have one extra condition that A is invertible. In fact, we have to shift the matrix A and that shifted matrix should be invertible. Okay, how we are going to do the shifted matrix, let us see. First, let us take any eigenvalue of A, say lambda K, and we are interested to obtain this eigenvalue. Now, what you do as a first step is you choose a number new. In our case, we are only working with matrices which has only real eigenvalues. Therefore, our new can be a real number. You have to choose this number in such a way that lambda minus nu in the absolute value is strictly less than lambda j minus nu for all j not equal to k. So what I'm trying to do is I chose one eigenvalue of a I want to build my power method that converges to that eigenvalue, lambda k. So what I'm doing is I'm choosing a real number nu such that lambda k minus nu will become the smallest eigenvalue of this matrix. You see, this is what is called shifted matrix. And that smallest eigenvalue is also unique, say, for instance, then again, we can 
apply the inverse power method for this matrix a minus new i so this means what you will apply power method for a minus new i inverse right and that will lead to a sequence mu k that converges to lambda well this k is unfortunately the same uh, notation as what we generally take as the index for the sequence so what to do maybe uh, we can take this as uh, l now l converges to this specific lambda that we chose here okay it has nothing to do with this index k right minus new inverse right so the inverse power method sequence mu l will converge to this if all the other hypotheses are satisfied by a minus new i inverse so that's the basic idea of shifted inverse power method so what we are doing again i will repeat we can apply the inverse power method to this matrix a minus new i to approximate the eigen value lambda k minus new because given that we have chosen successfully a number new such that lambda k minus new is the unique smallest eigen value of a minus new i if you can choose such a new then we can use inverse power method and in that case the method is called shifted power inverse power method so with this idea we can compute any eigen value of the matrix a using an appropriate shifted inverse power method why we say appropriate because new has to be chosen very carefully practically how will you do well if you can use gaussian theorem to choose the parameter new you have to think how you can do that say for instance i have the gaussian disks like this right and i am interested in finding say the eigen value which is neither dominant nor smallest but something in between you may be having many such uh, this ones suppose i want to find an eigen value which is sitting in this and if the radius of this circle is say very small then well we can find a new with this information right you have to think how to do that so if you are very lucky we can get this information of how to choose new from the gaussian theorem that is what i am trying to say if gaussian theorem is not helping perhaps you can go for the gaussian theorem on a transpose also that may give sometimes a good idea about choosing new right okay so whatever it is let us just take an example where we will make our life very easy by looking at the eigen values but in the exam please note that i may say without using eigen values then you may have to go only for the gaussian theorem here what i am doing is comfortably i took the eigen values and saw how to choose my new so that my shifted power inverse power method converges to lambda 2 that is my interest so what i am doing is i am choosing my new is equal to minus 2.4 well if i know lambda 2 it's very easy for me to choose a new here but in practical life we do not know these informations and therefore one scope is to go for the gaussian theorem that's what i'm again and again saying okay so let us take new equal to minus 2.4 and see how to build the sequences using shifted inverse power method well note that for shifted inverse power method we have to apply the inverse power method for this shifted matrix it means we have to apply the power method for a minus new i inverse okay see power method 
inverse power method, shifted inverse power method. These are the three methods that we are learning. So everyone has their own meaning. You should know that. So here we are going to construct the shifted inverse power method to compute lambda 2. For that, we have chosen nu. Once you choose nu, the first thing is you have to get the shifted matrix of A with respect to that nu, which is given by this. Once you have this, you now have to apply the inverse power method for this. That is what is going to finally be called as the shifted inverse power method. Now, what is mean by applying the inverse power method for this matrix? It means applying the power method for A minus nu i, the whole inverse. That's all. Once if you understand this, the rest all will go on exactly like how we do with the power method and more precisely what we did with the inverse power method in the last example. There we have taken A and applied the inverse power method on that. Now we are just taking A minus nu i, apply the inverse power method on that. So A minus nu i is given by this matrix up to four decimal places after decimal point. Now, again, I prefer to go for LU factorization and I have chosen to do, do little factorization. With that in mind, I got L as this and U as this. Now, once I have this, I can just do a forward substitution and one backward substitution to find the solution of this linear system, right? At every iteration for a given right hand side vector xk, right? So that is the idea. So that gives me yk plus one. And for every iteration, I have y given like this. Once I have y, I can obtain mu one. And once I have mu one, then I can find x1 as y1 divided by mu1. And then you can go on with the other iterations. You can see that your uh, mu is converging slowly towards a number, which is up to two decimal places after the decimal point given by minus 7.61. And what is this number? If you recall, our sequence mu k converges to 1 by lambda 2 minus mu. Therefore, let us look for 1 by mu 5. And that is going to be approximately equal to minus 0 0.1313 in view of this fact, we can see that this should be approximately equal to our lambda 2 minus nu, right? This is what we expect. And that implies our lambda 2 should be approximately equal to minus 0 0.13 three plus new, right? But what is new? New is taken to be minus 2.4. Therefore, our lambda two should be approximately equal to minus 0 0.1313 minus 2.4. And that is equal to minus 2.5313, right? So from this numerical computation, we see that the sequence mu k is in a sense giving us an approximation to the eigenvalue lambda 2 and according to it, it should be approximately equal to minus 2.5313. Let us go back and see that 
what is the value of lambda 2? We can see that precisely the value of lambda 2, at least up to the decimal places that are shown here, is exactly matching with what our shifted inverse power method gave us. So that's the idea of uh, shifted inverse power method. The main drawback in the shifted inverse power method, in addition to the drawbacks of the power method, is that one has to correctly fix the parameter nu, right? More importantly, if you are uh, interested in some specific eigenvalue, then you have to be more careful in choosing this parameter nu. Here, just for the academic reason, we fixed it as minus 2.4 because we knew what is the value of lambda 2. The choice of nu is generally arbitrary. Only thing is you have to choose it very close to an eigenvalue of A. That is only the important point. Otherwise, the choice is arbitrary. For instance, here we chose minus 2.4 is just arbitrarily we have chosen. There is no logic behind that. But in general, we may not be knowing the eigenvalues of A, but if we are uh, lucky, one can uh, get this information from the Gashgorian circle theorem applied to either A or A transpose. 